Welcome to World at Work TV. I'm Allison Avalos, and I'm joined today by Dow Scott of Loyola University Chicago and Tom McMullen and Eric Larson of Hay Group. And we're talking about the role of rewards when it comes to innovation. So tell me a little bit about why you had an interest in doing this research on innovation. Okay. Well, uh, Tom and I and uh, Eric, we do this kind of research each year. And we look for something topical, something that has meaning. And this year, we started thinking about that and we were referred to the conference board. It uh, basically uh, asked CEOs what the most important idea and what stood out really clear was innovation. In the last three years, innovation was in the top three items of what their priorities were. And in fact, this last year, it moved up to number two. You know, executives are realizing that if they don't innovate, they die. And it can be a very quick death. And so companies are not only saying that it's important, they are starting to really think about how can we create an organization that can transform itself on almost an annual basis. Yeah, and I, I think another reason is if you uh, unpack um, the, the CEO's um, concerns about innovation, uh, which um, this research did, is that there was a very strong uh, undercurrent of reward uh, in there as well. So CEOs are very concerned about having uh, uh, the right kind of incentivized behavior uh, in that and, and having more of an entrepreneurial uh, culture and uh, retention of, of the key talent that is accountable for innovation. So uh, it's, it's very much on, the, reward is very much on the mindset of, of CEOs around this topic of innovation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and once we started thinking about this and looking sort of into the literature, we found that in management, there, you'll see a book on innovation show up every year or two. Uh, human resources is, is being challenged to increase innovation, but you really don't find as much in the compensation sphere. And so our question is, what should compensation people be doing to encourage innovation? So Eric, can you start off by talking about uh, innovation and who the owner tends to be in an organization and what do they focus on? When it comes to the actual owner of innovation, it really depends on the company specifically. In terms of the companies that we looked at and were surveyed about, a third of them actually had a dedicated function that whose, whose responsibility was to really develop a solid vision and mission and message for innovation and deliver that out to the company. About 10% had an actual R&D function, so they obviously owned it. Um, but really, more than half the companies didn't have a designated area or group of people that, who owned it and who took responsibility for it and who were accountable for it. One of the reasons for that is, is that uh, in our research, we also found that uh, innovation is becoming everyone's uh, responsibility. Um, and it, it's not just focused on one function. And also, the, 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 the breadth of innovation goes far beyond new products and new services. A, a lot of organizations are focused on innovation, also uh, covering things like uh, cost efficiency and just being uh, more effective in the way that we uh, uh, support uh, the organization, say, in enabling functions. So you'll, uh, we, we see clearly a trend with uh, organizations uh, expanding their, their definition of innovation, who's covered under that, and I think that's one of the reasons why you see it, uh, where there might not be a clear function owning it, but it really is uh, everyone's accountability. Dell, how are organizations measuring innovation? Well, in innovation, you know, has really come out of uh, research and development uh, you know, organizations. And it was patents, it was you know, the, the ideas for patents, it was sort of uh, very sort of specific. And as innovation has sort of been spread through the organization, so have the measures of what means to be innovation. And really there's two categories. One category of measurement really focuses on new products, new ideas, new services, uh, you know, these new things that happen. And the other half of it sort of comes from process improvement and improvements in quality. And those two are, are measured somewhat differently. You know, one is measured internally, and there's often a lot more measures. It's more incremental so that uh, it's in some ways easier to measure because, you know, you get new ideas every month, every year, and those build. Whereas when you start talking about, you know, measuring innovation in terms of new products or something like that, then 
you know, these are one-offs sometimes, and it's hard to deal with. Now, you have patents, and if a firm's doing lots of patents, you probably get a consistent measure. But if it's somebody inventing the minivan or inventing the Frappuccino frozen drink for Starbucks, how do you measure that other than it just happened? The other thing, though, is even though there are these two different perspectives for innovation, looking at it internally within the organization and innovation externally as to how it has an impact on the market, there is this commonality between making sure that we have the right number of inputs in the innovative process and also measuring the outputs thereof. So the, the inputs from an R&D perspective would be, are we continually developing you know, a lot of ideas? Is there a highly you know, creative, innovative pipeline. Um, so companies are looking at just measuring, you know, how many ideas are produced from our R&D department or, or from our group together, or how many ideas from the manufacturing line are being dropped in the suggestion box for how can we improve internally. Um, but then also on the output side, companies are really looking at what is the, the actual or the, or the potential revenue and profits or cost savings from an internal perspective that are generated from these ideas once they've been implemented. So when you do look at innovation, you have to consider, you know, do we have a solid foundation of ideas coming in, whether or not they're good or bad, we just need idea generation. And then two, are we actually appropriately measuring them so we know what the return on investment is from those ideas? So Tom, what kinds of tools are there to reward innovation? Yeah, um, what we found out in our research is that organizations are taking a pretty balanced approach in terms of uh, the types of reward tools that they're using. So uh, they're not putting all of their emphasis, say, in incentive pay, although short-term incentives were, are a key tool, uh, we find that organizations um, rewarding for innovation in their incentive plans tend to go at it uh, in two approaches. One is to include um, uh, innovation measures as a part of their broad-based plan uh, and, and uh, measuring there. And then if there are uh, pockets of individuals or job types, say in product development or in R&D, you might have more exclusive focused uh, variable pay plans um, that are al aligned with those folks. Now, in addition to uh, the short-term incentives, um, we also heard a lot from uh, organizations in terms of spot uh, rewards and peer-to-peer -peer recognition programs, and those have particularly taken off uh, quite a bit over the last number of years. But uh, organizations are getting more uh, focused on wanting these peer-to-peer -peer recognition programs to complement what the organization wants folks to focus on. So instead of being ad hoc in nature, or just rewarding um, uh, previous service. It's really about key uh, imperatives, innovation becoming one of them. And then lastly, let's not underestimate or discount the importance of non-financial rewards. So you know, the, the, the acknowledgement from the business unit leader or the CEO having uh, uh, dinners and acknowledgements of, of great uh, innovation achievements are still very much alive and well in organizations. You know, building on that is also the, the impact that you have to really combine financial and recognition. Uh, it's something, if you're trying to create a climate of innovation, you know, simply slipping a person a check and saying that's a great idea and not letting anybody else know about it uh, defeats the whole purpose. If you're trying to encourage innovation, it's a collaborative effort. You want people to be thinking about it. You want it to be top of mind. You want to get them out of the everyday job and think more expansively. And so, Recognition is a, is a key element, I think, in any kind of program like that, but the incentives, of course, also drive it and are important. Uh, going back to the measurement, though, is if you're going to recognize certain ideas and reward certain ideas, you have to have people understand which ideas merit recognition, merit more money, and which ideas are maybe not such good ideas and, you know, are rejected. And so you have to have some kind of system to be sure that people understand the difference. Also, if we take a, a broad um, definition of reward, uh, take a look at job design. Um, there are a few organizations out there, for example, 3M, Google, uh, Hewlett Packard, that is a part of uh, the, you know, what it means to work for these organizations that um, these organizations will allow 15%, 20% of uh, the employee's paid time. They want them to focus on new creative innovation uh, areas. So uh, that, I 
can speak a whole lot louder than any monetary compensation is give me a fulfilling, uh, enriching uh, opportunity to really uh, focus on, on some of these uh, new and emerging areas. You know, I, as I listen to what you're saying, Dow, about the measurement of innovation, it makes me feel like there's a tangible component, a specific idea, a specific product, something very specific that you can look at, hear about, see, touch, feel. How about just the concept of innovation and that mentality and that approach in cultures where that's just part of what they do? Do those organizations make this link linkage to specific employees and their contributions and ultimately reward, or is it a little bit more difficult when you're talking about the softer side? Well, rewards, I think, have an important element of signaling to people that, you know, innovation's important, here's how we define innovation, here's how we think about it. It also has a very important aspect of reinforcing, and which sends another message to employees. But there's a big distance in between, and the distance in between is, do we have some mechanism for collecting suggestions, making, evaluating those suggestions, making sure those suggestions are in fact implemented if they're good suggestions? Uh, do we have a mechanism uh, for uh, giving people time or educating people so they can be innovative? One of the issues is that if you want people to be innovative, they have to understand the business, how the business operates. Uh, you know, just being a pair of hands, uh, you know, doesn't help you be an innovative worker. And so there's a lot of infrastructure, and that infrastructure hopefully creates a climate. And I think that climate then uh, reinforces itself. And you see that in companies like Siemens, you see that in organizations where innovation is just a part of doing business. Uh, but you need all those, you need the infrastructure uh, for this to happen. Rewards are anything that the employer provides the employee of perceived value. And if you're really looking to uh, you know, have a creative engine within your organization, if you're saying that's what we really value, you need a reward for that. And it's not saying that all rewards have a, a cash component to them, but you need to value that somehow. And we find that the best organizations are pretty innovative in the way that they value innovation, that they don't take a one-size-fits-all approach. They understand, they do good diagnosis, they find out what drives uh, their employees, uh, and they, they reinforce that with a, a variety of rewards. Yeah, well, we're reminded of that with uh, some organizations using vacation days, time off, as a reward just as opposed to just having cash. The people appreciate that. Another good example is P&G. They're, you know, High, they have a huge R&D department, a lot of scientists that aren't necessarily able to publish in kind of the external world. And to scientists, you know, publishing in, in the public sphere is so important, so critical, the ability to, to share your ideas, to share your knowledge. And they actually have an internal publication, I'm pretty sure it's published quarterly, where they can write articles, where they celebrate new patents, where they celebrate patentable ideas, and where they see how, and really highlight how specific individuals are making really remarkable and innovative contributions to P&G. And when we were interviewing P&G as part of this, they said you can walk into some of these people's offices and you'll see, you know, 10 years of, you know, these publishings just sitting right there on their bookshelf. So that's a very innovative way to reward a very, very specific and, you know, focused group that's very important to P&G as well. So it depends a lot on the group that you're dealing with. So are there any risks to applying this type of an objective approach to um, you know, the process of, of creating new ideas, new thinking, can that creativity be stumped? I think there's a lot of risk. And the, the risk is, uh, in part, that you want, you ask people for innovation and then you don't recognize it or you don't use the ideas and, and you don't explain why. And so the idea of, of trying to push innovation can make people just more cynical about the company. You know, I came up with ideas, but you know, nothing was done with the ideas. Now, it may have been a bad idea, but the person needs to know, you know why the idea wasn't implemented. Or it might have been a great idea, but just too expensive. The firm couldn't afford it. And you know, just to simply push that can create a, a, an environment where, like I said, people become more cynical. Uh, they, don't, uh, you know, they don't speak up. It just reinforces a sort of a negative climate. Uh, the other issue, and there is a little bit of research out there on it, 
is that where you have uh, big dollars for creativity or for productivity improvement, uh, people might get more conservative actually and come up with less good ideas because they want to get the money and so they'll go with the tried and the true. They know that if they do certain behaviors or, or push certain products that they'll get the incentive. If you take the risk, you may not. And, and so you have to be sort of careful in some ways about the amount of the rewards. Uh, one other risk is identifying the right person to give the rewards to. The old suggestion plans used to pick one person, and it was the person that put the suggestion in the box first. Now, there might have been 10 or 15 people sitting around at lunch talking about it, and that person beat everybody else to the suggestion box. Or it may be somebody was listening in on somebody. Or what about the person that implemented the idea? You know, so I think there is a lot of care that has to be given and a lot of thought of, of what innovation is. A, a, a lot of risk occurs when you design programs in a vacuum, where you don't have the, pe the right people in the room to fully understand why are we thinking about offering this program as we are? What are we trying to achieve with it? Um, who should be included? At what levels? What are the trade-offs? You know, sometimes um, these programs get designed and developed in the ivory tower uh, without appropriate alignment with uh, the people in the business, uh, the, the customers of these programs. And I think that occurs because there's still very much a uh, conservative risk orientation when it comes to areas of compensation because the dollars are so big and it's such an emotional topic. But I've seen those walls um, being torn down over the last several years, um, primarily in the spirit of engagement. Um, organizations are very concerned about engagement and I think uh, the organizations that get it are starting to include employees and line managers in the, uh, the design, the diagnostic process, as well as uh, when we have a program ready to go, uh, what's the best way to implement it and communicate it. So kind of moving uh, out of that ivory tower uh, mentality in terms of uh, strategy, design, and execution, and making that a bit more uh, participative uh, process is, uh, would be a recommendation. Thank you all. For World at Work, I'm Allison Avalos.